WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this! He got it! Spread Eagle for a spin! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Got a Looks chance. good! That's the goal! That's the goal! Candleton Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candleton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Championship Week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Hope you had a chance to uh, watch Candlepin Skins yesterday, and welcome once again today. Hope your holiday weekend is going well, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Hope you had a terrific holiday with the people that mean most to you, and we thank you for spending part of your holiday weekend with us here on the Winds of New England. Doug Brown, along with Dan Murphy, and a championship weekend once again. Uh, Dave Richards is unable to get there last week. He uh, watched John Plant come from behind in the last couple of games, and now John Plant takes a shot at Paul Berger, one of our one of our regulars. One of our regulars, yes, <laughs> yes. He hasn't missed a tournament of champions yet, and uh, he's in the position to uh, enter another one, but standing in his way is a young bowler there that... Uh, uh, really uh, created some excitement last week coming from 42 pins behind. All right, let's meet our two bowlers, our top two seeds in this series, as it turned out. First of all, our number two seed, he goes for his second straight win from Manchester, New Hampshire, John Plant. Uh, John is, is the young fellow I was talking about. Paul's my age, so I don't want to make too much fun of that. <laughs> John comes in averaging 128 as a high single of 184 and a high triple of 441. And last week with that come from behind win, John scoring a 356 to knock off Dave Richards in advance to the championship round. And he will face our number one seed from Hopedale, Massachusetts, Paul Berger. Yes, the older fellow. 128 average, 193 for high single. And this isn't a misprint, a high triple of 500 even. Perhaps you might want to just say the more experienced fellow. Yes, that's, that's why I refer to myself. Okay, that's how I always talk about you, too. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break and come back. We've got uh, $1,500 in prize money on the line here. $500 to the runner-up, $1,000 to the winner of this match, and, of course, the automatic spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We have our bonus ball contest, bonus money available. We'll tell you all about that after we take this time out. Don't go away. We're coming right back. All right, here we are, top two seeds, set to settle it all here. Championship week here on Stars and Strikes. Our number two seed, John Plant, knocked off the very hot Dave Richards last week. So John gets a shot to uh, settle it here with the number one seed, Paul Berger. Paul, the only one to uh, crack 700 in this roll-off series, but it was pretty close, as you can tell, just eight pins separating Paul and John. But we wipe the slate clean for this match, three strings to settle it. $1,000 and a spot in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions to the winner here today. And as the number two seed, John Plant gets the match started with a spread eagle. Well, he came from way back last week, but I dare say John's thinking I don't want to have a slow start this week against Paul Berger. John started last week with a 96 opening game and found himself 42 pins behind. But he made up ground in the middle game and then finished his comeback in the last two boxes of the match. He came from 11 pins down in the last two boxes, came up with two clutch marks and won the match by nine. And the nine box, so a 16 opening pair for John Plant. And now our first look at the, in the relatively young season, at Paul Berger. And what a record Paul Berger has compiled here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. As we've alluded to many times, he has been in all six of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions events. He's won it once. That was back in 1990. Last year, he went into the Tournament of Champions as the number three seed and lost to Dan Broder, who was the hot bowler in uh, this year's tournament. Paul's uh, last regular season appearance, the match that qualified him for the tournament in the spring, was uh, back in March when he 
threw a 406, came in the, as the number one seed and beat Jack Quinn. That's really been one of the secrets to Paul's success is that he's generally the number one or two qualifier and he only has to win one or two matches usually to get into the Tournament of Champions. But still, you've got to get there and Paul's been doing it on a regular basis. Here's Mark in the second, the first of the match. And John Plant right back with a big nine drop. And just the two pin. <laughs> he missed it, but he got away with it. He threw his hands up like, uh-oh. But he had a double piece of wood next to the two-pin, which helped him out. Six is the fill for John. Too low. And an eight box. So 40 through four, even with the benefit of the mark. Paul Berger now working on his spare. Paul's record over the years here on Stars and Strikes is 10 wins and five losses. But the hidden story behind that is that he has never lost a regular season match. He is 10-0. The five losses all coming in the uh, Tournament of Champions. So he's never even had to qualify twice in the same year in order to get into the Tournament <laughs> of Champions. He's done it his first time every year. Same leave John had a moment ago. Different wood. Talked about the roll-off scores in this series. Paul Berger with the only 700 at 705. And then John Plant's second, eight pins back at 697. The number five qualifier, Dan Mitchell, came in at 673, which is somewhat high for the fifth score. And then there was a tie for sixth. Mark Gregory and Terry Smith were just four pins out of the money at 669. So even though there was only one 700, there were a number of high scores in the roll-off for this series held in Dover. Uh, held in Exeter, I beg your pardon. Seven ten left for John, trying to get out of town with a nine box and move over to lane 31. He does. 49 through 5. Now well, he turned away. He knew that one was too far right. Got just a 6, 9, 10. Another open for John. So let me see if I've got this straight now. We've got $500 to the runner-up. We've got $1,000 to the winner today. We've got $50 in the bonus ball contest. And we've got bonus money available for the bowlers. $25 for three consecutive marks. 25 more for each additional consecutive, $250 for three strikes in a row, $250 for each additional consecutive. Does that about wrap it up? And? And? Nothing for us. Oh, okay. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Paul almost got the ball to jump back over and get the five pin. We're going to have to put an accountant on staff here pretty soon with all this <laughs> prize money and stuff going out here. Ten box for Paul, 55. Is just a six pin advantage early in the match. The bonus money, of course, from our friend Emmett Horgan and the gang at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. They remind you to come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, located on Main Street. That's Route 97, right in Salem, New Hampshire. Stop in, say hello, browse at some of the new cars. Say hello to Emmett Horgan. Tell him you heard about him here on 
stars and strikes. He'll appreciate it. So will we. Ooh, all trying to catch a piece of that wood with a 410. So a bit of a quiet start for both bowlers here in the early going. Just one mark each and Paul Berger with the four pin lead. Again, 6 9 10 is out of there for John. Good recovery there, but that's where he wants to put his first ball. Each bowler with just one mark apiece, both getting spares. Paul in the second box and John in the third. 10 for John. Next weekend, of course, we're right back, Saturday and Sunday, here on the Winds of New England. More Candlepin action. The Candlepin Skins on Saturday at noon from the Londonderry Bowling Center. And then back here next Sunday at noon from Park Place Lanes, and we'll be starting a new series with five more bowlers. And there's a spare for John Plant in the eighth. One thing we did forget to mention, and I'm sure you, those of you who watch us over the years realize that... Uh, this final score is very important to the bowler who wins because that will determine where they're seated in the Tournament of Champions. Well, 7-8, not normally a spare leave, but in this case, it is, although Paul made it exciting <laughs> <laughs> for the spare in the seventh. Almost lost that ball too far left. And off target on the fill, just three. So, so far, both bowlers kind of uh, filling each other out here and not really making a run at each other. Trying to find the range. A reminder, by the way, speaking of the uh, qualifying score, that Jack Quinn's qualifying score four weeks ago was 397. So that's the early score to beat here. Very early on in the season. John Plan on a spare hits the spread eagle. Ties the match up at 83. Clears out to 247. 3610 left. And misfiring just seven. Both bowlers kind of misfiring on the spares. Paul spare 37 and now John Spear, 4-7. Well, this may go. Let's wait. Nope, the three-pin will rock, but stay. And the spare in the 10th after a long wait. And the fill will be seven for a 107 for John Plant. Paul Berger will need a mark here in the final two to have a chance at the lead. I don't know if you could see it on camera while John was bowling those last two frames, but Paul Berger kind of put his hands in front of him with his palms down to the floor as if to tell himself, calm down a little bit, relax. Maybe he felt he was overthrowing a little bit. Ten box for Paul. Well, if he wants to keep this three-pin advantage, he's going to need a mark. Right in the pocket that time. Boy, like it might be better than that even. That wood angle is getting uh, increasingly poor on the 5, 9, and 10. That's what he's going to have to try to play, though. And... Nope. So it'll be John Plant in the lead after game one. 
low scoring game one. 10 for Paul Berger, 103. And after one here in championship week, stars and strikes. John Plant, 107. Paul Berger, 103. We're back with more in a minute. We'll get back to the bowling in just a second or two, but first a reminder about our bonus ball contest. $50 on the line at the end of the show. You can't win it unless we have your postcards in our big barrel. Be sure they're regular size postcards only, and be sure to include your name, your full address, including zip code, your number from 1 to 10. Very, very important. Every once in a while we get some cards without numbers on them, and that doesn't do us any good. We have to have the number from 1 to 10, the number of pins you think will drop on the bonus ball at the end of the show. And mail them on in to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. Good luck, and send those cards in soon. Paul Berger now. There's the situation. Two games still to go here on Stars and Strikes, Championship Sunday. And the big nine-pin drop, leaving the four. Hasn't been a strike in this match yet. That's the, really the closest thing we've come to the strike in this match. There's the spare for Paul using the piece of wood as a guide. Three spares for each bowler now. Also received some more uh, fan mail. People watch the show all the time. and Those people who are regulars, and I believe this was also from Manchester. Sure, but granddaughter sent this in for her grandmother who watches us all the time and I'd like to say uh, hello and keep watching to Louise Tutan and that was sent in by her granddaughter Tina so Louise keep watching us hopefully we'll be here for many years to come Nice 10 box for Paul Berger for the 27 opening pair. Now John Plant on the head pin. And he drops oh. nine, leaving the four pin. Guess they want to keep this match close, right down to each ball. A little piece of wood next to the four pin. Spare it up for John. Maybe it'll just be the first guy to throw a strike wins. <laughs> <laughs> now the fill. Make it seven. What else? <laughs> Unlike Paul, though, John has a makeable spare leave. But, but doesn't. And I'll just put down a ten. <laughs> Did and oh, <laughs> I should not have done that. See, John will be after you now. And that'll be 26. That's corrected now. Paul Berger leaves the 5-7 wow. with no wood on that shot, which looked pretty good. Certainly did. And a good effort there. We had to try to cut the 5-pin on the right-hand side. and Very nearly did, but... It'll be just a nine, and both bowlers still struggling. We talked about how Paul Berger, having qualified for the Tournament of Champions every year we've had it, six years in a row, the thing that's amazing about that, not only do you have to go through the roll-off process, uh, a two-step roll-off process just to get on the show, but then to get on the Tournament of Champions every single year, he's been on all six years. Only two other bowlers have been on as many as three times in the Tournament of Champions. Joe Ashline and Peter Flynn, and only three others have been on even twice in the years that we've had the Tournament of Champions. Those other multiple uh, Tournament of Champions appearances for Mike Morgan, Tom Morgan, and Pat Pay. Don't you just hate those lucky bowlers that can make that Tournament of Champions every year? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Talent has a little bit to do with it, and Paul certainly has that. John Plant for the spare. Ooh. Looked like, I don't know if it was the head pin came off the sidewall and stopped a piece of wood from coming over and helping out on the four and seven. And it's a nine box. And yeah. could.
Could it Maybe. be? Will it be? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Boy, that pin looked like it was half off the plate when it finally went over for the first strike of the match. John Plant trying to add to his lead. This will take us to a break, and eventually the 10-pin will go over. We'll be back in a minute. Paul Berger trailing in this match. Maybe the thing that's most amazing about Paul Berger's record is the fact that he's finished first so many times in the roll-off. Mm. Yeah, he seems to uh, really do well in the roll-offs, and of course, when you do, when you do that, your chances of be getting into the tournament champions are greatly increased because you don't have to go through that many matches. Ten bucks. Talked about Paul's high triple of 500. That was a memorable occasion for him. Happened on television. Not here, but it was one of those other one of those other uh, TV bowling shows. Paul a little bit disgusted with the result of that second ball, I think. Takes nine. Two more open frames, and John Plant working on a strike, hoping to add to his lead. And he held on to that one a little bit too long. Wow. Ouch. He's working on a strike. So he bails out with the eight fill, and his lead is now 11. With the 10 box in the fifth. Triangle plus one. Two, four, five, and 10, plus a piece of wood. Yeah, so you want to definitely be on the 2 4 side. Got a shot. Oh, right in front of the 10 pin. Two pieces of wood. So John can't take advantage. He stays open for the fifth and sixth. And box. And the lead now 12. And here's what happened on the spare attempt. Did what he had to do, but <laughs> nothing got over to the corner. Very unlucky on that one. Oh, five, eight, and ten, and no wood. I think Paul is a little mystified by why he's not getting better leaves on some of these balls that have been buried in the pocket. That one certainly was. I'm sure that's uh, probably bothering him, but the other thing is that the second and third ball, he's not putting the ball where he wants to. He's not getting the extra pins. He usually pins pretty well. On the head pin again, in the pocket again, and this time... You'll have the uh, 4-10. Oh, no, it finally goes over. I wondered if maybe he'd get a break there. All I had to do was mention that he has a 4-10. Something would happen. <laughs> and a spare. In the eighth. Second mark of this game, fourth overall for Paul. It's been a pitcher's duel so far. <laughs> Oh, oh, big strike. John Plant. That was a quick one, too. One, two. Remember, his ball breaks back from right, uh, from left to right. So that was right in the one-two pocket. This one's got to hurry. This one had to take a left hand, a right hand turn to make it back. Second time in a row he's done that on yeah. a strike. Almost like he gets a little charged up, and he really charges the foul line and pulls the ball to the left. Oh, this is not good. Four and a strike. You almost make me want to put some rental shoes on and get out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd have a shot at him, Doug, right now. Well, right now, I would say Jack Quinn's 397 is uh, relatively yep. safe, unless somebody really catches fire here. 
Paul Berger 15 pins behind, minus this ball. Oh, quickly goes that. eight of them, and look at this, 9-10, and a couple pieces of wood that he will want to stay around. He's got a shot at this. No, nope. not quite. Too deep. And he probably wanted to hit that a little farther up on the red line, but... The lead is seven right now for John Plant in the match. Get the feeling this is going to go right down to the end? I think so. <laughs> I think we're going to have a high scoring match, but it looks like we're going to have a match right to the end. And oh, there's Paul's Paul. first strike of the match. And it comes in the 10th box of game two. Well, I wonder what that might do for his confidence. Uh, Paul's the type of bowler that, you know, when he's not getting the breaks, you just want the match to be over if you're ahead because he just doesn't get flustered. He just keeps powering the ball in there, and eventually they start falling. Eventually, they start falling. <laughs> Six, seven left this time, but the good news is this is the 10th frame, so. I'll give it a shot here. Nothing on the six pin. So it's a nine fill and a 120 for Paul Berger, a two game total of 223. And that may be enough to take the lead depending on what John Plant is able to put up here in the last two. Well, he's got the four horsemen to the right, got some help coming. Of course, with a pin behind it, has a tendency to keep those pins in play. There you go. That's what happens. Usually it's a 10 pin in that case that stands up. That just kept everything, including the ball, in play right there. Needed that mark to help maintain his lead. And he's got a chance at another one here. Looks like each bowler waits for the other one to get going, and that wakes them up. This time the six pin with all kinds of lumber in front. And do you realize that that right there is the first time in this match that we've had back-to-back -back marks by either bowler? And if he were to throw a strike, he'd win himself $25 in bonus money. He's already assured himself of the lead going into the third game. Should put it into double figures. Lost it a little bit to the left, but carried seven for the 130. And a two-game total of 237 for John Plant. His lead is 14 pins with one game to go to decide it here on Championship Sunday. We'll be back on Stars and Strikes in a minute. Here's John Plant to start game three. As we look for our second qualifier to the 1995 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Oh, 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 John went left there. And again, he got the benefit of the wood to carry the mark. Second time that's happened for him this game, this match. Oh, my. Well, <laughs> 189. Spread eagle plus the five pin in the center, which oftentimes I've mentioned that if you're going to shoot the spread eagle, I have the five pin in there. Eight box for John, so even with the spare, just 21 for the opening pair. Paul Berger from Hopedale, Massachusetts. Paul and his wife Paula have two sons, Damon and Alex. And uh, Paul works for Stratus Computer as the director of purchasing. They're also his sponsor on the uh, WCBC Pro Tour. Paul does a lot of his bowling at the Metro West Lanes in Framingham, and an opportunity lost there. It'll be a 10 box. Hey, don't forget, when you come here to Park Place Lanes, either to uh, watch a taping here of Candlepin Stars and Strikes or to do bowling on your own, make sure you allow time for a meal at Willow Tree North Restaurant, located right inside Park Place Lanes. Serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Say hello to Rodney Cronin. He's back in the kitchen. Does a terrific job. Great food, great service. 
It's where the crew eats. Willow Tree North Restaurant, right here at Park Place Lanes. Crew is going to be looking for endorsement money. I know. For that. <laughs> One, three, five, and ten for John. Oh, yeah. Fine shot for the spare for John. He was not able to take advantage of his last mark. That's ten marks in the match for John Plant. And this time, he converts on the fill with an eight. And the six, nine left, trying to make it two in a row and three out of the first four boxes and increased his lead, possibly, anyways. Not going to happen, though. Nope. And the nine. So 48 through four. Paul Berger trailing, as you see, by 16. His unbeaten streak in the regular season here on Stars and Strikes in jeopardy. But there is a strike in the third. Two strikes in the last four boxes for Paul. You see the replay, one, two pocket, five pin, and then the 10. Light hit this time. Leaves the 8-10, but there is wood around. The problem pin here might be the eight. No, oh, got it. Spare on strike. So that will tighten things up a little bit. Paul Berger cuts the lead to 13, plus he'll cut into it further with the fill on that spare. Everything up for grabs here. Championship Sunday, Candlepin Stars and Strikes will be back to decide it after these words. John Plant in the lead. There's his damage today. On the head pin full. Each bowler has put back-to-back -back marks together only once in the match. Paul Berger just, just did it before the break. Spare on strike. So we've had no bonus money today. Not really that many opportunities at bonus money in a uh, six box for John Plant. That's what happened to Dave Richards last week. Got a couple bad frames there in that final game and left the door open for John Plant to make his comeback. And John's going to have to watch out that he doesn't do the same thing to Paul Berger. The one and the three, piece of wood resting against the head pin as well as the three pin. To the right and too far right. So it's a bad frame and a spare missed opportunity. And it's still there, a nine box. So now Paul Berger, with two marks in a row, a chance at bonus money here and also an opportunity to slice the lead to single digits before he faces those two open frames. Off target, let's see what happens. He's got six, one, two, nine, ten left. Piece of wood in front of the one and the two. Wouldn't appear to have the angle. Oh, he went too far left anyways. Remember, he's opposite a six box here, so he'd like to get at least two of these. The one, nine, and ten. Takes only the head pin. An eight box, but that cuts the lead to five. Well, you said it would go right down the wire, and that's exactly what's happening. Very low scoring game, but. Brooklyn pocket. Look out, oh. it'll be the 710 with Wood. All studying the Wood to pick a spot to hit. He does, and nothing happens. Well, he can keep it at five with one of these. And he does. So the lead is five with four frames remaining now. John Plant first.
with a spare? No. Looks like he hit it pretty well, but nothing touched the four or the five. Nine box. Well, John is in the opposite predicament from what he was last week. Now he's leading and bowling first. Last week he was trailing and bowling last. Well, he's got a chance here with a five and a nine. Real good chance now. The wood rolls up against it, but now it's moving away. And now it's stopped, and now it's moving back. <laughs> Looks like he's on the red line. He should have it, and he does. Yep. Important mark in the eighth. Mark number 11 for John Plant. Paul Berger has seven in the match. And a half Worcester right. Well, Jack Quinn can rest easy for now. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> now, Paul wants to get as many as he can here. He doesn't want the lead to lose too many in count. And it's going to be one to the nine box. The lead is now six. Now he has to match the mark put up by John Plant in the eighth. So it would appear he would need one more mark than John. Well, he'll have a chance at one here. Not an easy shot ordinarily, the three, six, and nine, but the wood in the mix should help. He's on target, and that's a big spare in the eighth. He'll go down to the last two frames. Six pin advantage for the man you're looking at right now. <laughs> John Plant working on a spare. Looking for the big fill. Just catches the head pin for seven. and just missing the target, the object pin, the three. Opening for Paul. And it's a nine. So now the final box for John Plant. He'll try and put up whatever he possibly can here. Yeah. If he was to put a mark up, Paul would have to do a, a decent fill and two more marks. Otherwise, it's a decent fill and another mark, and it's a half whistle left. He doesn't want a bad frame either. He's got a lot of pins to shoot at. Well, that's a pretty good out. John so, gets out of it nicely with a nine, but a pair of nines, not what he wanted in the final two. Paul Berger will need 122 to win, right. to win the match. So he will need one more mark. Oh, a oh, big break there. There's the big kick on the four pin. But Paul, he's got a difficult spare, Doug, with that wood. Is, if you can see in that shot, it's way out in front. The ball caroms off that. It's Maybe the ball will take the 10, but I think he's going to leave the six. And Paul is, as you can see, you know, I hate to say this, but almost you want to slow the ball down a little bit. But not many bowlers can do that. Tries oh, the left boy. edge. It doesn't work. You saw Paul's reaction. Boy, it looked like he... He had gotten a rare break during this match with that four pin kicking out, but then the wood settled in a bad spot, and this will come right down to the last box. Paul Berger needs 14 pins in this box to win the championship and to continue his unbeaten regular season record here on Stars and Strikes. He's in the pocket, but what oh, will the wood wow. do? The two, the five, and the 10. This shot will decide it. He's just going to have to play it to the left of the two pin. I hope everything, no, he's. Not no. quite, and there it is for John Plant. Into the Tournament of Champions. Paul Berger finishes it out with a 10, a 118, and a three game total of 341. By three pins, John Plant is into the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We'll be back to award the prize money and more in a minute. Back we are at Park Place Lanes on Championship Sunday. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. The uh, the scores were low, but it went down to the very last box, as we suspected it might. 
And uh, John Plant is the man who ends Paul Berger's regular season unbeaten streak here on Stars and Strikes. Yeah, it's just like uh, they both had something to do next spring, the way they <laughs> bowl there. But it was, it was a close match. But uh, these uh, didn't bring their best bowling here. But uh, a win is a win, and it's, he's into the championship. What... Uh, what can you do? I know we like to pass along tips as much as we possibly can, and we have a minute here to, to chat. Uh, wh when when your score is low and you're not bowling what you think you normally do, and this would be for, for any bowler, from the pro to the league bowler or whatever, what uh, what can you try and do to change things? We talked a couple of weeks ago about what Dave Richards did to change his luck. Yeah, the uh, the only thing in three games is really tough, especially if you're on the head pin. You, you might not want to change anything, hoping that they're finally going to break. But the only thing I would do is, is try to give a different angle the ball coming in on the pin. See if you can get a little better pin action by moving left or right on the approach or, like Dave did, move forward or move back. Because obviously the, the, the ideal situation is to always have the ball coming into the rack on an angle. Um, rather than straight on. Yeah, most of the, both of these bowlers kind of come from left to right. Dave Richards, uh, a few weeks ago, had a 444. His ball broke a little right to left, so maybe that was the ball to use today. I don't know. <laughs> go with the screwball rather than the curveball. There, there you go. All right, let's talk with both bowlers. First of all, a round of applause for Paul Berger. Uh, many times champion here on Stars and Strikes, and... Uh, Paul, I, I haven't had to give too many of these $500 checks to you. In fact, this is the first one uh, because uh, normally you're you're the winner in the regular season. But see, now the good news here is that you get to come back and, and try again before the season's over. Well, I'm sure I'll give it another shot. It's <laughs> I can't leave with that. <laughs> well, it was just kind of a funny day. Neither one of you really had a chance to, to really string anything together. I think that kind of depends on your sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought I threw a lot of real good balls. I, I, tried, I was going to make an adjustment or two, but... The ball was in there. I figured eventually I'd start to get some, some pins to fly, and it just never really happened. Yeah, you're right. It seemed that uh, neither one of you got a break uh, as well. In fact, I, there was one shot I particularly remember in the third game where you kicked out a four pin, leaving yourself with a 6-10, and then you had a roadblock in front of the 6-10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another shot that, you know, it could go. If you, you get a break, it goes, and if you don't, it doesn't. I mean, uh, this was his day, and, you know, more power to him. Well, the, uh, the good news is, as I say, your streak of uh, appearances in the Tournament of Champions is still alive because there's plenty of time left in the season. But, uh, again, congratulations, $500 for you, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Very good. Thank you. All right, Paul Berger, congratulations. And uh, now we'll have John Plant as our winner. Try and get us a match in our bonus ball contest. We're up to $50 this week now. And uh, John has already uh, had a big money day for himself. Let's see. Let's see what else we can have happen here. Well, still falling, and it'll be an eight. And it is a match for Pauline Lemoyne from Rochester, New Hampshire. Pauline Lemoyne, congratulations up there in Rochester. That's a match on a guess of eight pins. You win $50 and also a brand-new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries. A brand-new set also goes to John Plant. Slide right in here, John, uh, as the champion. He's had him all the way, right? Uh, exactly <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Terrible scores. Well, again, uh, a different situation than what you had last week. Uh, you had to roll the the clutch spares last week. This week, all you could do is watch. I imagine that's tougher, right? Yeah, you want to be in control on something like that. I had a chance, and I didn't put any marks up. But I got lucky he didn't either. Well, that's why we keep score, you know, to see who finishes with the most. And you had three more than Paul did. So as a result of that, $1,000, the championship prize money, and uh, also $25 in bonus money added in from last week. And uh, now you can sit back and find out what happens in the spring. Of course, I, I wouldn't get too comfortable with that 344, but at least you know you're in. Oh, man, that's it. <laughs> Probably be last spot. Well, John, congratulations. It's terrific. Uh, last week you came in here looking for your first singles win, and now here you are and you're into the Tournament of Champions. Congratulations. We'll see you in the spring. Okay. All right, that's John Plant from Manchester, New Hampshire. And uh, what a great story that is. He had only been here once previously before last week. He gets the come-from-behind win last week against a very tough customer in Dave Richards. And now this week, he outlasts Paul Berger and uh, and gets the win, and he's into the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, he's been trying for a few years, too, to make the shows, and that'll buy him a few extra uh, practice games, I'm sure. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's uh, remind you one more time. Of course, now is a great time to remind you about our bonus ball contest, because now with the winner that we just had, uh, again, Pauline Lemoyne up there in Rochester, New Hampshire, we're going to empty out our big barrel and start fresh next week. So this would be a great time to get uh, postcards to us. And mail them on in, please. regular size postcards, remember only. Include your name, your full address, that number from 1 to 10, the number of pins you think will drop on the bonus ball, just as John Plant just rolled a moment ago. The number from 1 to 10, be sure and include that on your card, and then mail them on in to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087.
Well, it's interesting. I, I mentioned that uh, John comes in, he gets the 344, which obviously uh, probably won't put him ahead of too many people in the Tournament of Champions. But on the other hand, Paul Berger will have a new situation for himself. He has to take the, uh, the consolation check this week, but now he has four more chances. There are four more series uh, in the regular season to try and get into the tournament and extend his record there. Well, he's in accounting, I think, or purchasing. He's going he's to get on that this, maybe this is the way to do it. Click 500 a few times and then get in. There you go. All right, we will be back next week, of course, next Sunday here at noon on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We'll have a brand new series with five more new bowlers to uh, begin a brand new four-week sequence. Don't forget, Saturday at noon from the Londonderry Bowling Center, it's Candlepin Skins here on the Winds of New England. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you.